A new Africa is emerging. Growing in wealth and influence, its contemporary artists are gaining increasing international recognition. This series of African masters seeks out the rising stars of some of the continent's undiscovered art scenes. Ethiopia's contemporary art scene enjoyed an early head start. Its capital, Addis Ababa, is home to the continent's oldest art school. Since the end of communist rule in 1991, the city has been at the center of an art renaissance. Desta Hagos graduated here in 1969 and became the first woman in the country to make a lifelong career from her art. And her work has been shown globally. I knew that I would be an artist from the very beginning to end. I know that uh, some people were saying that when I joined the fine art school, they, they were telling me uh, it doesn't pay. How can you live with art and so on? But I thought I can live with what I love, whether it pays or not. Today's generation faces the same dilemma. It's really exciting time. At the same time, uh, it's also a very challenging uh, period for, for the young and uh, responsible uh, Ethiopian artists. Because uh, as, as it is common anywhere, uh, artists are like facing this more uh, uh, through the process of commercializing their artworks and then uh, on the other hand, and just being a responsible uh, artist, just that who uh, tries to have a you know, critical dialogue with us, uh, using their uh, creative production process. The art school is a very important component of uh, Ethiopian modern art. It was established in 1957 during the emperor's time. So it's just one of the early, early uh, institutions of uh, art. So it's, it's very important that way because um, you know, so the tradition was built earlier than, than any other African country. But the thriving art scene, supported by Emperor Haile Selassie, was to face a formidable challenge from the Derg, Ethiopia's communist rulers. So in 1974, you know, when the revolution came, everything was thwarted, everything just was cut off. You know, for 17 years, the art school just performed, um, created works that are quote-unquote socialist realism type of works or propaganda propaganda works for the communist regime at the time. So really creativity was killed for 17 years. So it's, you know, just recently that it's uh, artists are really coming out, you know, because it was dead for so long. Uh, and now artists are, uh, are, you know, coming out really vibrantly. And the art school is a very big component of that, of that trend. When I was a student, that was uh, during Haile Selassie's end of time, you know. At that time, at the peak time, uh, they were giving it attention. Then I went to the States and then I came during the Derg's time. I mean, it was horrible. We, are, we were thinking for our survivals, you know, to live, to stay alive, that's it. Then the Derg left out, then everybody became free and it's flourishing like at the center of the art resurgence is the Asne Gallery, run by Konjit Sayum. In the early 90s, after the change of regime, something that I really noticed was that what was lacking in this town was a space, an art space owned by a local person that would have a continuity. Um, because it was only the international cultural institutes that were organizing on behalf of Ethiopians and young artists. So I was thinking it would be nice like, to have a space where we could have our own exhibitions and keep the exhibitions as long as possible. Aida Molone is a photographic artist whose work has been shown in Africa, the US and Europe. She has returned to Ethiopia to develop its contemporary art landscape. I mean, for, for me, the, the main reason that I came here is, um, you know, I spent most of my life abroad and I've always identified with Ethiopia, you know, even though I grew up abroad, I still grew up within the culture. So uh, one of the things for my mother was always to come back and to do something, you know, for your country. Coming here in 2000, you know, there was an exhibition 
once a month it was like a big deal, you know. Now there is like an exhibition almost every day, you know, every week there's something happening. So this shows you that the artists are becoming more active, uh, regardless of the scope of the work, for, in my opinion. The fact that the activities are happening, this is the key thing. So you have, you know, very commercial art, and then you have, you know, uh, abstract art or contemporary art, however you want to define it. But within that, you will find the full spectrum. And now, you know, we're getting more into performance, more installations, you know, more conceptual things as opposed to, you know, the straight, you know, in the sense of the nationalistic art of, you know, glorifying Ethiopia in the past and, and so forth. You'll have a lot of people expecting, you know, they when they see a lot of these abstract works, they're like, but that's not Ethiopian or that's not African. And I'm like, yeah, but it's contemporary Ethiopian. But the long history of art in Ethiopia means there's an appreciation of its creativity within the country. I've always witnessed, uh, maybe it does the Ethiopian character, but a very strong passion. People really try to understand. People try to really, you know, look and, and see and, and question what's going on here. So there is always an audience. While there is an appreciation of art in Ethiopia, artists still struggle to find space to develop away from commercial pressure. Netza Art Village in Addis Ababa is one place that seeks to provide just such an environment. The advantage of being together is to become very strong, to be heard, to create a space where there is, where there is no space at all. Once you're coming out of art school, there is nowhere to go. So you have to rent a studio, or you have to be you know, hired somewhere to, get, or to earn money, and you have to sell your artwork. So that's not you know, easy for the artists to survive in that way. So most artists are like forced to be guided by the gallery owners, mostly the commercial gallery owners, to create an artwork what the gallery desire is. One of the things that African artists have to continuously be careful is that uh, they're being stigmatized or they're being put in one kind of uh, position where um, when they talk about destitute, when they talk about uh, poverty and pain and agony and all these things, that's what is wanted because that's what Africa is expected to have. Meskrem Asagued runs the Zoma Contemporary Art Center, which was built by artist Elias Sime. This is Zoma Contemporary Art Center. It's a residency for artists to come from anywhere in the world, here or abroad. This was made by Elias Sime. Um, it's made with mud and straw, stone and wood, so it's all natural material. It's um, one of the material that's used locally. There's a whole technique behind this, which actually is the secret behind uh, building this. Um, you mix it every three day, days, adding a little bit of straw and water um, for about a month, minimum three weeks. And as you do that, you actually see it fermenting. The smell starts changing. It starts smelling like wine. And, and then you know, with the smell, uh, the builders know when it's ready. And if you use that, that if you follow that procedure, then it becomes like stone. Um, the only enemy for this thing is water. You know, you, you want to protect it from rain. And uh, so you do that with the roof. You're actually walking on, on a, the stone sculpture here. and um, the art begins with the door. Elias works with anything. I mean, he's one of the multi-talented uh, artists who can use any kind of material turns into art. Um, he works with wood, he works with mud, he works with plastic, um, electrical stuff. His upcoming exhibition is all about motherboards and a circuit board. Um, so he works with all kinds of material. The most Im important thing about Elias's art is that he is not using material because they're found object. The material has to tell the story of what he wants to tell. So it relates to the story. So if he has um, a composition of something or if he has an idea, then he goes out and gets the material 
that would follow that idea. In part two, Elias Sime reveals his latest works made from circuit boards, and some of Ethiopia's other rising stars demonstrate their process in painting, installations, and woodcuts. Welcome back to African Masters, uncovering the world of Africa's emerging contemporary artists. This edition comes from Ethiopia. Elias Sime is one of the leading contemporary artists working in Ethiopia today. His mixed media work has been exhibited worldwide. His latest project, entitled Tightrope, is a series of works made from discarded circuit boards. Its subject, the city itself. Technology uh, but technology uh, drew in a baron, eh? Ficker must that a family ignorant unit in Tenmohon, Tennish uh, technology Yarra Gomisling and name. Magnatum, uh, Ulum, Kand Kagano, Ulum, wake a computer gano, wake a silk gano, technology gano, uh, Negriello. He collected a rago. ከተላየ <laughs> Antonochun laytochun nagar yega sarrot. Yes, yasta kakkalu sawochun ullu masamna. Sunu ba fikar na masamna falko. Kena tum yame jam mera ek thaj ul kize samiti na. Ani masabo yezare unu lethichano. Makneyatum power misatay. Yes, collect so let's see, Masrat asked for the game. Any Uh, traditional music uh, because in under the day to farom yes singing and dumb I don't know to look so so no more selling to farom coming the feet but I'm just not caught up in the middle Tamarat Gazayan has exhibited in the Middle East as well as Europe and the US. Although contemporary in style, he draws on traditional motifs. Many times his, my work is, is like uh, inspired, you know, from motifs of culture and tradition, the rituals and belief and many things. There is in uh, our country, uh, tribal things, many things. So I'm just taking from that and looking a long time and feeling what kind of 
everything it's 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 passed to me like uh, uh, peace or some kinds of to be nervous or what what it translates to me so those all uh, uh, motives and cult, uh, colors I concentrate in the village in the ritual places and the religious places and I experiment again I take those colors and shapes and I put to my paintings to my you know papers and I I just experiment so I find it that they are just take you to the deep meditation and feeling the culture. Yeah, I find it like that. When I'm just working, this my own uh, uh, artworks or paintings or painting with manuscript things, I completely feel the religious one also. But it's completely different. For example, the text that you see in my paintings, it is my words and which is coming out from me. There is a chain, there is in harmony together, but it's, it's, it's a little bit changed because uh, the words and the techniques and the compositions and even the sign, the sign which I am using from them, I just take from different tribe, tribes. For example, uh, there is which accept Christianity, there is no which is not in the part of that. There is a people which celebrate ritual things and some things. So I can I take something uh, from that also from the from both. So I just mix in my spirit and I bring it out in my own way. So that is my exercise, and which makes me live and uh, uh, understand with the cosmos. Gazayan's intricate work is contemporary, but uses Ethiopian culture to firmly identify his place in the world. Wanja Kimani is less sure of her place. She was born into a Kenyan family, raised in the UK, and is now at home in Addis Ababa, where she is often mistaken for an Ethiopian. So this piece is called um, Self Portrait, and it's a recent piece that I've just done this year, um, based on kind of living here and people assuming that I'm Ethiopian, so everyone speaks to me in Amharic, um, which I'm learning slowly. Um, but there's this thing of people saying that you've got an Ethiopian colour, um, which I just find very strange because I, I, know, I didn't know there was such a thing as Ethiopian colour. Um, and it's this idea when someone tells you something repeatedly, you start to believe it. It's like a myth that becomes a truth. Um, and that can also be influenced by tradition and culture. And once you're told something is how it is, you kind of grow up believing it regardless of any questions that you might have. Kimani has exhibited in Africa, Europe, the US and Japan. This is her first solo show in Ethiopia. The piece is called Tell Him You Love Him um, and it's about a friend of mine who lost a child. It was a premature birth. But I was just amazed that, you know, while she was holding this tiny kind of little person, that he actually looked like his father. And that just struck me that, you know, however, it's unseen, you know, a pregnancy is unseen, but something really amazing is happening. And when it's lost, it's a loss, it's a person, even though it's not recognized as a person. So um, the piece is the advice that another person who was there gave her. The woman was obviously very emotional and crying. And another woman told her, you know, just tell your son that you love him. Just tell him you love him. And that was a kind of phrase that just echoed over and over again. It, it remained with me, so. There's 13 of them. Um, on that, at that hospital that day, 13 children were lost. Um, premature births. And so there's 13 of these that are going to be hanging from the ceiling. Um, and it's going to be attached to this red sort of string and there'll be a pile of other um, thread on the floor, kind of signifying the connection between the mother and the baby. The wool is unique to this particular installation, but the embroidery has come in recent works as well. The wool was um, particular to this piece because that's what they wrap the children in. It's something very similar to this.
Ephraim Solomon has shown work across Africa and also in Dubai and Croatia. He is currently working in residency at Tanzania's Nafasi Art Space. Understanding a willingness to push boundaries demonstrates a growing confidence in Ethiopia's contemporary art scene. I have optimism in the possibilities. You know, we have the culture, we have the history, you know, it's, it's a very rich country. The direction that we can go in is quite amazing. You know, we could be, you know, the cultural capital of Africa. I think with all these art activities that are taking place, we need to have more networks and more interactions within the continent as well. There are lots of exhibitions, and it's not only exhibitions as in, in the old days, you know, Ethiopian art, you know, with big eyes, and instead people are now saying things. They're daring to say things uh, through their art. And then you have the very young ones who are really aware of what is going on globally and they're embracing that and they're trying to find their way, so I'm happy. The most interesting part is we have so many young, good artists now, uh, very enthusiastic. Um, they know what they are doing also. And there, we have so many exhibitions, we have galleries, we have museums, we have viewers, um, foreigners and Ethiopians. So it's, it's a good time now for art. <laughs>